It can be easy to fall into the habit of using class time to lecture each week, even though we know incorporating activities will result in deeper learning. We assign reading, but students don't read it, so we feel like we have to lecture so they'll absorb the material. This video will demonstrate how you can use Canvas new quizzes to build an interactive lesson for your students so they'll consume and engage with the content before they come to class, ensuring they're prepared to participate. Let's start by taking a look at what I mean by interactive lesson from the student view. So new quizzes has a feature called stimulus content. This allows you to create content that you can then attach questions to. So you can see here for this first section, I'm having students watch a video and then I'm having them reflect on what they watched before moving on to the next section. Of course, this means that there will be some grading for me, but you don't have to include essay questions. You can simply use multiple choice questions like I did for this next section, and then it will be completely automatically graded by Canvas. But you can see that this also allows me to include my own voice along with the content I'm asking them to review. I'm setting up the video and telling them why it's important and then giving them some questions to check their understanding before they move on. And those questions will give them a chance to apply it as they go and it will also indicate what's most important in the content to help it stick and we know that chunking content in this way and breaking up the content and giving them an opportunity to apply it and use it we know that helps them learn it and it's metacognitive students have the opportunity to see how prepared they are to answer the questions and that really primes them to pay attention as they're working through it and you can include all kinds of content here videos as i've done but also readings links images your own written or recorded mini lectures and attaching these questions will really encourage students to actually consume the content because they'll want to earn those points and then I have a few more sections. You can see here that you can also set this up so the content is to the left and the questions are to the right instead of the questions falling below the content. And then finally down here at the bottom, I've included a question that isn't attached to any of the stimulus content and it's just giving me an opportunity to see what questions my students still have before we meet in class so that I can review these questions um, before class on Friday and I'm prepared to address them quickly before moving into the planned activity. So now let's take a look at how to build this in Canvas. So now I'm in the course as an instructor and I'm going to go ahead and add a new quiz. And I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about new quizzes here because I have an entire video on our YouTube channel already about that if you want to know the specifics about what's different between classic quizzes and new quizzes. But I will point out that we do set the number of points on the settings page for new quizzes rather than question by question. You can still add point values to each question so that you can weight your questions within the quiz, but they don't have to add up to this point value. Um, and again, I go into more detail about that in the other video, but I'm just going to give this maybe a little bit of a lower point value. It's a formative assessment, lower stakes, giving me a chance to see how my students are doing with the content before they move on to the summative assessment. So I'm going to scroll down. I can add my um, due dates and all that if I want to, but we're going to build the interactive lesson with this build button. And it's going to bring us kind of into a, a new area in Canvas. It looks a little bit different from what we're used to. Um, I can add instructions if I want to, but let's say I'm ready to add that first bit of stimulus content. I'm going to click this plus button, add content, and this is where I can add questions if I want to, or I can click this um, stimulus button to add some stimulus content. And I'll just call this part one. I can add some optional instructions here like and then here's where I build my content. And like I said, you can kind of configure this how you want to. If I leave it like this, um, my content's going to be here on the left and my questions will show up on the right. I'm going to go ahead and change that to show you what it looks like. And this kind of gives you a wider um, area to work with. And I would definitely recommend doing this one if you're going to add videos. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this is not the rich content editor. And just to be clear, this is what I mean by the rich content editor. So this is the content editor we're used to seeing throughout Canvas, whether we're creating an announcement or assignment or a discussion post. We're used to having all of these features to edit our content um, in Canvas, but it's not there yet in new quizzes. So they have kind of this pared down version of a content editor. It's a little bit different from what we're used to. You'll see we don't have the buttons to add 
our studio videos, but it does have this option here to insert um, media and we can grab our embed code from our studio videos and paste it here um, if you want to include those. And I'll just show you real quick where you can find that if you click this three dot menu from your studio video and then share, you'll go to links and create a link um, and it'll provide this embed code here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and then I'm just going to paste it here and you'll see that when I add the embed code here, it does add my studio video and I can use this handlebar um, to expand that so I have more room to work here. However, I just want to point out it is a little bit cumbersome to use this pared down editor and it's not necessarily going to look how you expect it to when you're done. So you definitely want to um, just check and play with a little until you get it to look exactly how you want it. They are saying that they're adding the rich content editor to new quizzes. So hopefully this will be less cumbersome in the near future. But for now, we do have this, you know, kind of basic version to work with. And like I said, you can add some context for your students, add your own voice, set up this video, why they'd want to watch it, um, all of that. And then when you're done, you're just going to go ahead and click add stimulus. Now my content is here and I can start uh, attaching questions. So you'll see as soon as you add any stimulus content, it's going to give you this attach question button. So you'll click that. You'll decide what kind of question you want to ask. Let's do multiple answer and it inserts the question there and you will continue to do this um, until you have all of your questions that you want to attach to that, that first stimulus content by just repeating this process. Once you're ready to add more stimulus content, you can click this plus button again and add plus stimulus, and it'll do that you'll start all over again, um, creating your content and then adding attached questions. And that's really it. Once you're done, you're gonna return. Um, and this is how new quizzes works it has that return button and it kind of bounces you out you'll notice i didn't hit save it saves automatically so i don't have to repeatedly hit save i know in classic quizzes there was an issue where sometimes you'd forget to hit update and save and you'd lose your work which was really frustrating so now you don't have to save at all um, within that build area it just automatically saves everything and when you're ready to use the lesson you'll just publish it for your students and that's it we do have a lot of new quizzes workshops available on the workshops calendar if you want to come and learn more about how to use those we are always happy to help